Have you ever heard music and seen colours in your mind? What colour is this that you're hearing right now? And no, I don't mean sonic colour or timbre. I'm not talking about the rich warmth of the cor anglais or the piercing ping of the piccolo. Rather, I'm asking what actual visual colour do you hear? I realised that might be a confusing question. How could I possibly hear a colour? In our imaginations, we might see a lush spring landscape during Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, or we might vividly picture the stress and agony depicted in Shostakovich's Eighth String Quartet, but for some, it's not just in their imaginations. Synesthesia is a neurological condition where stimulation of one sense leads to an automatic stimulation of multiple senses. In other words, imagine hearing music and seeing colours. Or imagine seeing a painting and tasting flavours. Everyone's experience with synesthesia is different and unique. For some, numbers and months will have colours, while for others, every time they hear the word sock, they'll taste bacon. But the most common form of synesthesia is colour synesthesia. That's where people see colours in their mind every time they hear sound, especially music. So I want to look at two big composers and how they used synesthesia. Olivier Messiaen and Alexander Scriabin. These musical geniuses relied on their sense of colour in their music, creating music, instruments and even treatises on harmony, unlike anything that had been heard before. First, let's look at Olivier Messiaen. One of Messiaen's most popular works, the Turangalila Symphony, is an astounding flourish of orchestral timbre, including a piano, a glockenspiel, a celesta, tubular bells, Chinese and Turkish tam-tams, and, perhaps the most unique of all these instruments, the Ond Martineau, an electric keyboard instrument invented in 1920 by Maurice Martineau. But what sets Messiaen apart is his unique perception of colour. He saw his music as a stained glass effect, and was inspired by the beauty of stained glass windows, describing this as the beginning of paradise. As he puts it, stained glass is one of the most wonderful creations of man. You are overwhelmed, and I think this is the beginning of paradise because in paradise we are overwhelmed. Messiaen went ahead and invented his own modes of limited transposition, combining his visions of colour with modes or musical scales to create something truly magical. From his perspective, colour and sound were intertwined. For example, there's his mode 2, second transposition, gold and brown. This mode was used extensively throughout Turangalila and was a source of inspiration for Messiaen. In his own words, he says, What does a rose window in a cathedral do? It teaches through imagery, through symbolism, through all of the characters that inhabit it. But what most catches the eye are its thousands of spots of colour, which ultimately dissolve into a single, very pure shade, so that someone looking on says only, that window is blue, or that window is violet. I had nothing more than this in mind. Listen to the fifth movement of Turangalila here to experience mode number two in action. And that's not all. Messiaen based many of his pieces solely on his colour perceptions, such as his Couleur de la Cité Céleste, his Trois Petites Liturgies, his Le Meur Bleu et le Rousserol Effervat, or his Cateau pour la fin de temps, and more. He even wrote a treatise on harmony, where he took multiple chapters to explain his colour experiences and how they translated into chords, scales and modes. When asked about his condition, Messiaen explained, I believe every human possesses this hidden sixth sense, but not everyone knows how to harness it. Speaking of harnessing synesthesia, our next composer, Alexander Scriabin, took things to another level with his invention of a colour keyboard to help display his experience. 
Skriabin was a contemporary of Rimsky-Korsakov, who was another synesthete, and the two of them often compared their colour experiences and drew musical inspiration from each other. But Skriabin was more open about his synesthesia and incorporated it into many of his works. Like Messiaen, Skriabin wrote his own colour descriptions into his scores and even created a chart to show the colours he associated with specific chords. Skriabin took things a step further by inventing the clavier a lumières, or the keyboard of lights. He wanted this instrument to be played alongside a regular piano in his work Prometheus, the poem of fire. In fact, there's even a section in Prometheus that specifically instructs the keyboard player on which colours they should be playing and when, and this is somehow written in the treble clef. The colours would correspond with specific chords that Scriabin wanted to showcase, especially his favourite. The mystic chord. The mystic chord is a combination of notes that he associated with spiritual ecstasy, and it can be found throughout Prometheus and many of his other solo piano works. So what were the colours Scriabin associated with this chord? Well, there's bright red for C, lilac purple for F sharp, dark rose pink for B flat, very light sky blue for E, grassy green for A, and bright sunshine yellow for D. An explosion of colours that brought his musical vision to life. This mystic chord was loved, and it was even picked up by jazz composers such as Duke Ellington. You can hear his use of Scriabin's chord in his piece Reflections in D. Now you may be wondering why does this all matter? Well, composers and musicians who have this phenomenon often use their sixth sense to their advantage to play around with harmony, scales and modes. Sometimes whole pieces were composed based on the composer's colour perceptions alone. Franz Liszt, for example, was quoted to have said, Gentlemen, please, a little more blue. This section is not meant to be rose, but a deep blue. And that was in reference to his symphonic poem Hunnenschlacht. Sibelius wrote, Music to me is a beautiful mosaic which God put together, and he associated colours with his symphonies. For example, his second to him was a bright sunshine yellow. So while synesthesia may not have a direct correlation with how harmony and music has evolved over time, it certainly opens a window into a composer's mind and allows us to see their music in a new light from a new angle, one of a dazzling canvas of colour. Are you ready to take your musicianship to the next level? The Musicality Training Programme is here to help. This comprehensive online course offers everything you need to thrive in the classical music space. From ear training and sight reading to music theory and writing, you will develop the skills you need to succeed. This complete step-by-step -step program is designed to guide you from absolute beginnings to a university level of skill. With bite-sized theory lessons followed by a wide range of exercises over 13 modules, this program will help you to develop your musicianship from every angle. And the best part? It's worked for hundreds of musicians just like you. Don't let a lack of access to quality instruction hold you back any longer. Join the Musicality Training Program and start your journey towards musical excellence today. Click the link below to join now.